we're going to take a look at today is, is trig again, but this time we're going to figure out how to use our calculator to get those values that we've been getting from the trig tables. So just a quick review before we start getting into any kind of problem. Um, just a quick reminder that our formulas for sine, cosine, and tangent are that sine is the opposite side over the hypotenuse, cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, and tangent is the opposite side over the adjacent. And now just a little quick review. Um, if I'm looking at angle A as my reference angle, so if that's the angle that I'm looking at, from angle A, the side BC over here is the opposite side. The side across from the right angle is always going to be the hypotenuse. And from angle A, the side that's left over down here is going to be the adjacent side. So the sine from angle A would be opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite side is BC and the hypotenuse is AB. From angle A, the cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is AC and the hypotenuse is AB. And from angle A, the tangent is the opposite side over the adjacent. So the opposite side is BC and the adjacent side is AC. Now if I switch my reference angle to angle B, from here the sine is opposite, which would be this side. The hypotenuse is still across from the right angle, and now the adjacent side is the side that's right next to angle B. So all I really did there is switch my opposite side and my adjacent side. So now from angle B, my sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, so that would be AC over AB. The cosine from B is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, so that would be BC over AB. And then the tangent is the opposite side over the adjacent, so AC over BC. And now if you take a look, you should notice a couple of things. The cosine of A is the same as the sine of B, and the sine of A is the same as the cosine of B. And then the other thing is that these two are reciprocals of each other. Okay, so now let's switch to using our calculator to find those trig values. All right, there are really two things that they can ask you to do in a trig problem. They can ask you to either solve to find an angle or solve to find a side. Um, now, one thing that you wanna make sure is that your calculator is set up to be in degree mode. If your calculator is in radians, it will give you wrong answers all the time. So the first thing um, up here where it says calculator use, make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. I'm just going to star that. Now the easiest way to do that is to check on your calculator and enter the sine of 30. It should equal 1 half or 0.5. If it doesn't, then your calculator is not in the right mode. So if we take a look at the calculator over here, if I go to my scratch pad and I type in sine, my trig button's right here, so all my trig values are in there. So if I type in sine of 30 and I hit enter, I get negative 1.0, which is not 0.5. So I have to then go into my, all right, I'm gonna go into um, my document menu and go down to settings and status. And I'm going to go to the document settings and now if I look, my angles are being measured in radians, which we haven't ever, we've not we never heard of at this point. And I'm going to go ahead and change them to degrees because that's what we know. And then I'm going to switch it to make default. And so now if I type in sine of 30, I get 0.5. And so now I know that I'm in the right mode. So you always want to make sure that you check that before you use your calculator um, because if you are in radian mode, you will get wrong answers. All right, so now let's say that we have a, um, a right triangle and they want us to find an angle and they give us the sides. Let's say the side is, I don't know, 12 and this side is 15. Okay, so in this case, this would be the opposite side. This would be the adjacent side, so this would be a tangent problem. So if I plug into the formula tangent of my angle 
is equal to opposite over adjacent, I get tangent of x equals opposite over adjacent. And now really what's happening here is we need to get x by itself, so we need to divide both sides by tangent. But when we do that, we end up getting x equals 12 divided by 15 divided by tangent. Now if you remember back to algebra, I can bring that bottom up to the top by writing it to the negative 1. So really what I end up with here is tangent to the negative 1 of 12 over 15, and now that's something that I can actually type in my calculator. If I go back to my calculator and hit that trig button, notice that I have sine, cosine, and tangent, but I also have sine to the negative 1, cosine to the negative 1, tangent to the negative 1. You're only going to use the inverses or the, um, the, the sine negative 1, cosine negative 1, tangent negative 1 when you're looking for an angle. So I'm going to go ahead and choose tangent inverse or tangent to the negative 1, and then I'm going to type in my fraction 12 over 15. And so out comes the size of that angle, which would be 38.7 degrees. If you're looking for a side, all you really have to do in that case is um, go ahead and use the regular sine, cosine, and tangent buttons. So let's say this time that we know that this angle is 42 degrees, um, we know the hypotenuse is 15, and we want to find the length of that side. So in this case, if this is my opposite and that's the hypotenuse, I'm going to use sine. And so my, my formula, sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Go ahead and plug in. This time I know my angle. And then I have the opposite and the hypotenuse. So in this case, I want to get x by itself. So I can either multiply both sides by 15, or I could turn this into a proportion and cross multiply. Either way, I get x is equal to 15 times the sine of 42, and that's something that I can go right ahead and type into my calculator. So I'm going to type in 15 times the sine of 42, and so it turns out that that side is going to be 10. All right, so let's take a look at two together. In this first example, we have an angle measurement. We're looking for a side. This side is the opposite. The side over here is the hypotenuse, so we're going to use sine. So I'm just going to write down my formula and then plug in what I know. So I have sine of my angle equals the opposite over the hypotenuse, and then I can cross multiply, and I get x equals 32 times the sine of 28. And now I can go ahead and use my calculator and type in 32 times the sine of 28 and I end up getting 15 for that side. All right. In the second example, this time I have my angle that I'm looking for. This is the opposite side and this is the hypotenuse, so again I'm going to use sine. And when I go to plug in what I know, my angle is x, my opposite side is 12, and my hypotenuse is 16. So what I really need to do here is divide by sine, and so then x equals sine inverse, of 12 over 16, and now I can go ahead and type that into my calculator. So I have sine inverse, and then I want to divide 12 and 16. And when I do that, I get 48.6, and so that angle would be 48.6 degrees. All right, so on the back, what I would like you to do is try the next four and see if you can come up with answers for those.